Hello, good day. Today we are discussing a short list of Pitygorsky Prize. Today we are having a wonderful book and a wonderful author of this book, Gleb Pavlovsky, who uh, wrote, I think, two years ago a text, a very complicated and rich metaphor, which is called Ironic Empire, Risk, Chance, and the Dogma of S System of Russian Federation. We shall be talking about it today. And uh, um, as a rule, the text of Pavlovsky are read as a, the political analysis, but I think that in this book and in the latest publications, uh, we are seeing something else besides analytics uh, that could be seen uh, through the prism of uh, philosophical or philosophizing metaphor. Um, as the founder of uh, our prize for the best philosophizing work in, in Russian language, said Alegini Saretsky. And uh, besides the author of this book, uh, there is uh, one per more person present, Ivan Davidov, the member of the jury, our old friend. We are, and here we are sitting a small philosophical gang here. I think that that for, for the philosophical prize, the book, we're giving the book, uh, the book uh, of Gleb Pavlovsky continues the tradition of Russian philosophy when the object of reflection uh, time and again uh, narrowed down itself to Russia and its uh, institutions and political habits that uh, were created in Russian, in Russia and supported in Russia. And here comes my first question, to which extent uh, do you think, what, what is the object of this book, which is the, which is the subject matter of this book? To what extent um, you think uh, sociologist Kardonsky was doing the same thing when he was uh, creating this philo his philo soci sociological view of Russia? Mm. What is the object? This is a good question. I tried to, to find out this question writing this book exactly and, and the four or five the books preceding it. At the beginning, in the very beginning of these meditations, I had a very naive, I had a very naive desire or naive question, where comes the success of such a weak state, the state that acts abnormally, that acts intuitively in many ways. I, I call it jazz state at the time, that it, it is doing all improvisations of all sorts, uh, doing some acting without even knowledge to, uh, to what end it acts and where it would lead to. And gradually I began to understand that we are talking about a real object which is not a state in a strict sense. It is not an, a society, it's not a nation. But it, at the same time, it is, it exists, it acts. And its abnormality is not something shameful in itself just as just as n nothing is uh, shameful in vagina or penis this is a, an abnormal object perhaps it can be, become something else or it cannot make that change but uh, what we are interested in is the question how to, how to live how to survive and live and how to try at least to do something. Of course, there is a path of science, 
uh, and the path of scientific research. There are so many things written, uh, also including inclusively about Russian Federation, about Russia in the regime of in the scientific regime. It, um, uh, as a rule, they tend to become uh, to tend to, typolo to typology. Of the, the first, they say there is the tradition of three hundred years of autocracy, and they um, and they take out the generative, uh, the similarities, the generic sim similarities, and when they come to the idea that it uh, gives us nas nothing to describe exactly Russian Federation. Uh, they, they say this is a hybrid um, organism. Uh, it uh, rearranged the uh, common traits. But what have we found out? Other, one thing we have to get out of this enchanted forest or uh, at least build up. Uh, the, second on the, the second path is to build up uh, something uh, stable, a stable home. Gradually, I stopped talking about regime, about Russian regime. Of course, it's an interesting uh, thing in itself. It's an interesting occupation, but it will not give us a key. It will not give us the insider's key to the next steps. And I started uh, using uh, the word that is being used widely without me, system. I'm saying, I'm calling it System uh, Rush, uh, RF, System of Russian Federation. It's a black box. We don't know what it is, but we have to find out how it acts and how it will it, how will it act. Uh, it, uh, how can we predict its action? Because typologies of all sorts in the, in the previous times, they never gave anything. For example, 100 years ago, Russian intelligentsia had had a lot of uh, uh, scholars, good scholars, numbered am among them. They are not; uh, they were not arbitrary people with uh, with very solid theories of uh, Russian power. But on the other hand, when they started acting. The, the, the result was the same as when they uh, they would ac put X-ray or at uh, Planet Solaris in Tarkovsky's science fiction film because uh, it started producing monsters. Abnormality. What is it? I tried to un to understand um, what is ab abnormality and I realized that it's a whole machine of produ producing of abnormality it's normalization of abnormality there is always in every moment there are sectors of of, of the regular and of the abnormal and there was a there, there was always an exchange between them and you can always say this is normal this uh, this is stable and the stability is ensured by this exchange. So finally, what we are talking, why is it Russia? Well, what we see is that this system in different uh, times, different epochs, preserved uh, in a miraculous sense, uh, it preserves some uh, some strange qualities that should not have been preserved. It preserves, for example, uh, a month ago, I, I uh, picked into the um, peeped into the uh, December's notes, and there was a correspondence of the Siberian governors uh, who uh, received the Decembrists and the between so this was the correspondence between the governors and the Petersburg and the local authority 
not understanding the uh, regular uh, the orders of Petersburg what does it mean to hold them uh, to keep them in the strictest sense and then uh, but uh, protect their life preserve their life what do you mean uh, and I thought and I thought it was uh, only Bolshevik spoke like that they said probably we should just do them in and this is what a, a aristocrat, a noble aristocrat, is writing back to St. Petersburg. He doesn't mean just to shoot them, but because because he has no uh, orders of this kind. But what he means, what he means, the way of treating a person, a human being. Uh, uh, that doesn't sp spare his life, and this, uh, this, you can, this approach to a human being is preserved till now. You can kill, you can poison, you can shoot. So this, uh, uh, this system remains itself not because it's uh, it has some Russian mentality or primordial essence. It's just a system that acts in a certain way. What I'm looking at is always a, a behavior. It's a behavior of Russian system, which makes it uh, terribly stable uh, in the condition of uh, under the condition of the weakest uh, point in every sector. Uh, yeah, it's very philosophical. Ivan, I would uh, I would like to get to interfere. Speaking about the object, in this uh, book, I think stylistic um, uh, characteristics are very important, particularities. I read many books about politics and how Russia is built, but this is a unique thing. It's I think, I think that the prose is rhythmical, it's closer to poetry than to poetic, uh, to politic analy analysis. And there is, there are wonderful, there are wonderful uh, findings, philological findings. For example, the word, a word населенец, inhabitator. Uh, I think we can, I'm a fan of this book, and I think we can give uh, uh, a philosophical prize just for this term, the coinage of this term. But of course, uh, the object of the book is the uh, quite difficult uh, experience of the author himself, who was in contact with the object uh, he was in touch with. It's a, it's a hymn uh, of love and hate. But I have a, qu a question uh, that would probably transfer us into some closer space. You are describing uh, some unpleasant, very cruel system, and but a very stable system that will never sink, which is not a state. It's a kind of me mechanism of survival and reproduction of those who are at power. And you are very cons uh, consecutive in showing how uh, the system sorts out, fr gets out from every cri crisis. It provokes crisis, and the crisis work f for it. And of course, it's the plot of a uh, Russian fairy tale about famous fa fairy ta tale when the character does something awful and should have uh, die, died, but finally he marries the princess. Do you think that uh, there are some um, uh, some frontiers, some borders of exhaustion of this system? Do you think that we probably approach the system uh, uh, where it can crack? Can something break it, Some meet some crisis that will not, not serve it? And probably you're describing something of the past, not what, of what will happen. Well, look, just as we know, the predecessors of this uh, system bro uh, broke time and again, but then, in some strange way, they uh, they created the, a field of continuity and preserved themselves in a very strange way 
because from these empires it's uh, Russia is the only one who survived after the after actually being uh, defeated in the war after revolution and the civil war uh, um, uh, nevertheless, and perhaps because of that, it uh, uh, resurrected. The others broke and nothing terrible happened. For example, I am now in Vienna, and Vienna is not nostalgic about Austro-Hungarian Empire, and it feels really good. But look, we, what, we are in the great situation, we are back uh, 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 in M M Moscow and Russia preserved itself as empire and Moscow is terribly nostalgic. Yes, if you plunge into psychoanalysis of the Russian mind, it's a, it's a theme of a different book. And there are many books that, of scientific books, of about the people who want uh, who want to see Russia as uh, some uh, cancer-like uh, uh, organism or fatal organism, starting with Dugin and uh, continuing, but not only with him. But uh, it's a kind of computer that uh, Peter the Great b b built, that he assembled from the elements that partly existed because of uh, due to John the Terrible and Mongols. He has, he has built an interesting analogous computer, the function of which is uh, uh, lies within history, which at his in his time uh, 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 um, acquires a kind of structuralized form around this, the idea of progress uh, around the, the those retarded and progressive etc and this computer is being able to be reprogrammed and c continuously preserves his own library during its change the worst thing one can do to it is to try is to scientifically transform it. Just as I said, there were there was a, real, a range of attempts of the kind, and it they led to some useless or horrible uh, consequences. My uh, task, my inner task, I do not impose it uh, in the book, but my super task is to understand how to we can sort out get out of that forest as a matter of fact ironic empire is the first part of a manual i'm i'm writing for, to as how to treat russia because we're entering the period when we are, we, we will need to do it. We need to understand uh, what we are affecting, what, what we are influencing, and what we want to achieve. Because there are many myths within our system, and they are very uh, persistent, and we have to actually uh, see, see why those myths are persistent. The myth, they, they are saying that everything is spontaneous. Some people say uh, everything comes spontaneously if you don't touch anything. Others say if you just hit it really bad, and uh, then it, everything will f fall apart, and then uh, something spontaneously will form. Uh, what I think, if we uh, kill it, and we break it, then from the the broken parts, the new version of this evil computer will uh, reassemble itself. But I have to say that there are weak there are weak places in it. But I would like to understand it clearly what happens. Uh, what what would happen when we when we affect those weak pl places? For example, the population, which is always uh, displeased. 
and which always uh, is in kind of complot with power. It's very interesting. It, it can it can use the liberal opposition's vocabulary without touching contemporary times. For example, the old facts. In 1905, the, the Bolsheviks, uh, it was uh, the biggest party. The Bolsheviks were the actually cadets, not the Lenin's party. And this discourse of cadets were, were, were uh, was prevailing not, not only in the urban population but also among the peasants, not Bolsheviks. But then it all evaporated. But it never led. Because you can go into political details, details, but it never led to. Uh, the appearance of the discourse that gives us to uh, gives us a way to work with Russia, but always, you know, as you know, a victim always has has an alibi. I also have to be very definite about it. I I proceed uh, from the. Uh, lessons I got from uh, Gefter, my teacher, from his concept of Russia. He uh, actually was his, he was saying that it is it was not a state, it was not a nation. It's a mix. It's an assemblage of uh, state and society in the center of each, which uh, the power is is in the main communicative uh, co communicative. Um, element that always interferes into the quotidian and uh, private life. And there is the second source of my um, ideas is my personal experience. It's not only that I worked at a certain period for the government, but in the 90s, how, but what's important is how it is easy in the 90s how easy it was to change everything, how the change, uh, how all the ch changes were easily ac accepted, how easily the elements of statehood, of uh, empire, of uh, empire's power, how how easily it, the, it was never opposed but it was actually uh, um, accepted. Uh, I would like to come back to the idea of abnormality. I like it quite well. well. Just and the, but I, 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 I'm looking at the concepts that, that are uh, that always say that Russia is very unique, uh, that we are the only ones. But I like this uh, idea of ab uh, abnormality, and it works better. And reading your uh, book, and finally you start being really involved into it, and you finally read it as a poem. Uh, what, but what I'm worried about this construction. But abnormality is in relation to what? What is normality or normal normalization when we are speaking about uh, about Russia? Of course, we are. When we, it's great to speak about post empire Vienna, that is not nostalgic, and it's uh, involved in into something else but we can we can point at vienna for example as a norm but it, it is a complicated question whether we would, we would want moscow to turn into vienna and for example the loss of territory which uh, we would have to experience but before i f f formulate the question I would say something. There is, uh, I got an Oxford textbook on philosophy. I o opened it up. Uh, I, 
I, I saw that the articles were African philosophers about the uniqueness of the African man. Uh, and this is, so, so the first point one, everything is in uh, Africa is always abnormal, etc., etc. Et so if we are, for example, uh, we would take a Russian textbook on Rush, Russian philosophy, we would... Uh, we, we would uh, put it close to this African textbook or um, uh, then uh, we would read it as the main, as, as the same text. So it was an easy way to see the uh, back side of abnormality. So, but it seems like the whole world is abnormal. Africa is abnormal, India is abnormal, everybody is abnormal. But, but it's easy to speak about it uh, from the European context, from the point of Vienna. But uh, the rest of the world, and you, some European states, uh, but the rest of the world is experiencing the work of the political machines um, the, uh, that are abnormal to the West, as, but are described by the people who are coming from the West, who are taught to, to think uh, in the Western style, and they come to Russia, it's, it's, uh, and they describe them as abnormal because they're ta taught to, to think in the Western manner. Why should we even think about it? Because the whole world is abnormal then. It's a famous, pro it's a well-known pro uh, problem, but it's a kind of, uh, cons it's, it's a construct built over the real, a real problem. Of, co of course, we will easily find in the internet forums of all sorts of co uh, different countries. For example, a, fr a friend of mine showed on the city forums of uh, uh, Cambodia that that are filled uh, with the complaints of how the world doesn't estimate properly the, the role of Cambodia and the complot of the great powers against Cambodia that brought uh, this, uh, this country to that poor state. It's normal and it's, <coughs> and it's human. Everybody has it. I'm speaking about ab abnormality of a different type. I never mm, <coughs> indulge myself in the discussing of this question because so many, mm, there are many people who want to discuss normal and abnormal Russia. Our own conversations are filled with uh, abnorm abnormality of all sorts of phenomena that we witness. And it's hard for us to, de to convince us, to convince ourselves that, is, that it is uh, normal. I am not looking into the books uh, because uh, many, many people really want to discuss normal and abnormal Russia. Our own conversations are filled uh, with uh, the abnormality, uh, discussions of abnormalities that we cannot accept and that we view. And it's very hard for us to convince ourselves that, that they are normal. That this, and that's, uh, some people will find the same thing in Mexico somewhere else. I think that we, that there is another aberration, aberration an idea that, that there is a continent of normality and some uh, ex exclusions, the abnormalities that are exclusions that are caused by evil will or some mishappenings or ignorance or bad chance of, of leaders and nations. This is an enlightenment concept. And if we are to take a broader view of this, it belongs to the dom domain of history in its European understanding. It's a very stable do domain that, that 
built itself into the mines uh, since the end of the 18th century, <coughs> that there is a progress and there is a, um, uh, it's a strange value uh, that somebody is uh, further than the others and the abnormalities of those who are retarded, who are, who are, who are uh, lagging in behind. And within the existence of Homo historicus, historicus this is in, an inevitable view. It is very hard to um, overcome it. But you mentioned the African men, but that human species came from uh, uh, fr came from northern uh, Western Africa, and uh, but. And in most unjust way, they didn't come to being in the region of Moscow or somewhere close to the Black Sea. And uh, the Chinese uh, people, uh, that uh, they do not agree that Sinantus uh, is the uh, diverging line, but not the main line of human beings, human species. But it's not that we always had this, had this domain of the world history in the European understanding. It never existed. And when it came to being, Toynbee has, has it somewhere. He, uh, he mentions it in a pass, passing manner that when only European... Uh, civilization was only forming, Peter the Great was the first to understand that it has very stiff ribs reproduce, reprodu uh, that could reproduce themselves. Nobody actually understood it by the time, even in Europe. And uh, in some sense, um, Peter the Great was actually st actually stealing the model machines exposed in the window shops, and they, and he actually was stealing from those window shops, sh sh shop windows, and was building from these exemplary models the r Russian state as such, and it's very important because in within the frame of European civilization, everybody can be whatever they like, but the European civilization was formed also because some were excluded uh, from it. China was excluded from it in one way, and Russia was also excluded from it uh, in another way. Ru the, the, the Russia that became a barrier, a, a margin, a margin, a margin uh, of European civilization that is facing it but which is not uh, which is not included into it we can continuously repeat that we are europeans but but we should not uh, being sympathetic and empathetic uh, people we should we should not explain what kind of europeans we are we are not europeans and those people who thought we were were really sorry later Gefter, uh, was, uh, my, my teacher, was saying that Russia formed itself as a kind of historical training fields of European technologies. And uh, on the other hand, the uh, freedom, the liberty of manipulating with those uh, elements, uh, which were... Uh, uh, which Europe never had it. We can discuss it, uh, sh uh, and, uh, and we can show it is very easily how Russian corporations uh, came to being in the 19th century, and for how within Russian Federation, how how we, we this such imitative constructions of power came to being. They they are imitative. Yeah, well, they they say, uh, they say this in ex they, they t t used to say we wanted to show off that we could be Europeans. We wanted to 
uh, outplay Europeans, and this was most important. And in many ways, it we we managed to do it, and that's why this system is is a strong pl player. It's he, it's a it, it, he, this player can play with very weak um, cards. And my next book is dedicated to this, and that we are, we actually were building conscientiously, we were building the power that remaining uh, weak should uh, learn to play, outplay its partners, not, not becoming strong, because it's too, um, uh, it's too, con uh, it's uh, because when power is strong, it's too uh, uh, consumption. Uh, it eats a lot of energy. Therefore, this power sh goes to the shortest way. It's weak, but it can play hard cards. But of course, it's understanding that this this is not about abnormality of Russia in comparison to the normal states. Of course, we can discuss that all states are abnormal in this or that way, and and we can see the right one be in beyond, and somewhere I read it would be only forty uh, thousand four uh, chosen ones. But I think uh, that what is abnormal is the attitude of this state or power to these pop populations. Uh, and we and uh, we because it's important because we are representative of these populations. It's he, he, Gleb Olegovich, the author of this book, is showing that he's writing a manual and instructions for the for for its inhabitants. But, but it's our task is to survive here somehow. I don't know even it's a noble task in itself, but in this way. You said that b before, that you don't want to touch the contemporary life, but I would like to touch upon it, because this book is all, always clinging to quite uh, actual topics, but now the empire is meeting a very important crisis. I I'm very closely uh, following whatever you're writing about Belarus. So what do you think that this crisis will break it or it will chew everything or, or is it it will be difficult you see crisis can be uh, ruinous in many ways if we are speaking about the russian system it avoids uh, positive crisis for example if belarus in a peaceful way could become a changed kind of state then the uh, un united uh, state of Russia and Belarus would certainly be, certainly be a challenge uh, to Russia but it would be a positive uh, challenge but I'm afraid that something else is happening uh, that Russia is coming against uh, several crises. It entered into all sorts of different crises. I will tell you that uh, even in the be beginning of the 90s we had as many crises, because in all main directions of its activity, of the activity of power, it came across all sorts of challenges Oh, it's a geopolitical game with America, with Trump, Pand then pandemia, although it's a uh, complicated and deep crisis, and and the opened uh, institution of uh, uh, secret murders, which uh, came to uh, the front in the poisoning of Navalny, and Belarus. The Belarusian vortex, which Moscow doesn't know how to participate in or to distance itself from. Because to distance itself, it means to let Lukashenko 
to let Lukashenko deal with the situation himself. But if Lukashenko goes mad, he will be very mad. He will act madly. And here comes one of the instances here that you mentioned before. Uh, where are the borders of fragility? Where are the borders of tough uh, st stiffness of the ribs of the system? Because when the ruler acts in a certain way in the world, he always tries to preserve, to switch the attention of the population and the elites and establishment to, to change thematically, to switch thema thematically, to switch the people uh, thematically. It, it actually is a heritage of Stalin. He actually was calling it Stalin-likeness st 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 of the elites. But when somebody else begins to switch the attention instead of the ruler, when uh, Lukashenko acts as a small Putin, and Putin, a big Putin has to somehow relate to this, this uh, effect doesn't uh, of um, scaling uh, doesn't work. There is no switch from the Ukraine to Syria and from Syria to somewhere else, and there is always a break of system. But it's a very bad break because uh, this small little man who is in Minsk, who is running around madly, he can provoke actually the European war. Putin cannot, but Lukashenko can do it instead of Putin. And therefore, we find ourselves in a more complex situation. I don't want to to reproach any, anybody. Belarusian opposition is as beautiful as Dubček, but it can actually end like Dubček. Uh, you see, you're saying uh, it is a bad break. Is a good, a good break possible? Well, it demands a certain range of compromise from different parts. People have, will have to agree that we will uh, they, that they will not get everything they want. Putin will not get all that he wants. Belarus wouldn't get all that it wants. Belarusians will, will not get what they want or everything that they want. We we actually have a bad case before our very eyes that started in a very good strategic uh, situation when Yanukovych, when he started this kind of uh, seesaw effect between Russia and Europe uh, with Ukraine in the middle, of course it's, a, it's politics, but it didn't end in any way. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, Russia is very weak. Russia is has very little income, but it's a great scaling force, a scaling force. And all the politics of this uh, Russian Federation, uh, all states were uh, stabilizing themselves on this uh, uh, scaling force, Eurasian scaling force. But once it can be become explosive, Gorbachev showed that this variant is not excluded, a good variant is not excluded. But because Gorbachev's uh, example is not really a working one, because uh, uh, he, in another way, also was um, x-raying Salaris uh, uh, with the hard x-rays. So here is my last question, probably we will, if Ivan doesn't come. If Ivan, what do you mean if? Uh, that I won't come with uh, the final question. Uh, do, you, do you think, uh, um, uh, Gleb, are you, are you faster than the system? Do you write faster than the system or the system develops faster than yourself? than your writing. I think that me and everybody else is lagging are lagging behind 
because we are starting with the lower level. In fact, the the, uh, the Ru Russian studies uh, 30 years ago, uh, it, it was just horrible. And uh, the first decades, uh, they, they, they were stagnating. We cannot say that they had any kind of breakthroughs. Now, that's why I think that now, now we are lagging behind the system. And a bad thing is, uh, uh, is played uh, by the transfer of Western conception, conceptions that are not used here as uh, scientific concepts, but uh, uh, so, but all sorts of alibis or parapolitical theories but they are used outside their own context. There is a real difficulty here, Kirill, a real uh, metaphysical difficulty. 30 years ago, we, 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 nothing was predetermined. There was a vacuum in place of the uh, of the ruined Soviet Union. There was a vacuum and, and the demands of this vacuum on behalf of Europe and the West that Moscow should, uh, 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 should begin to perform a function of lowering down the risks and become the uh, the uh, build up the system of the security that became f finally the function of Moscow. They tried to stop the process, but uh, later on this function was uh, uh, taken by the uh, um, knowledge not so knowledgeable and then knowledgeable hands. It was a chance. It was a, we we were. Uh, agents we were blind kittens or agents but finally we, uh, we are having instead of this stationary uh, bandits we are having the stationary hooligan who knows really and uh, Mr. Mikosov, whom I remember since 1991, he, he actually very honestly said he, that he was looking at the uh, crowds near the uh, White House and he was thinking, uh, how could he not, we not be shooting? But he was quiet man, he never shared his thought. Today, we are in a very complex situation, but whether, uh, whether the phenomenon itself became more complicated, Rus Russian system, I think no, it's just overloaded by the challenges. It's in, this, in a state of uh, on the verge of the break, but it's the same the system in the, in the middle of it, which there is uh, there is a gru group of very um, spoiled and sinful intelligence, uh, not bureaucrats, not those horrible bureaucrats, no. Sometimes it's marginalized uh, of the 90s people of the 90s that they suddenly found themselves in another country in the another world and and tries to uh, take it under to master it but it's not demonic it's it's just quite it can be deconstructed but it's quite quite uh, dangerous I will come back to something I started with in that final fragment. We was, uh, it's a kind of new kind of book. It, it bespoke a new kind of when a very good metaphor can uh, co cost much more uh, than 
uh, than any attempts to build up or any kind of political theories of dictatorships. And I suddenly remembered that we're talking about this book, and I want to come back to it. Gleb Olegovich, in that book, in, the, in that cycle, in that, in that way of th thought, whom do you see as your predecessor? Who was your... Uh, who was your inspiration except your own experience? In my pre 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 preceding books, I directly and arrogantly, I was referring, I was referring back to George Cannon, whom I really like, love. And I love very much the American tradition of po political text, where when it becomes political, or sometimes it becomes a kind of insider's reflection, and quite patriotic, but also very straight and honest and merciless. In, in its criticism. In Russia, is very I, I like Andrea Amalric. He actually influenced me a lot. Zinoviev, Alexander Zinoviev. But I can't say, unfortunately, name any books, very many political Russian books that I'm reading with interest. But it's it's a kind of uh, processing machine. Except for Gefter, I cannot name anybody. Gefter was a political uh, thinker, although he never loved uh, this uh, expression. I hopefully would be able to show in the book. Uh, that I I wrote, uh, which I which are call, which is called the weak ones. But really, there is a, a kind of asymmetry in my attitude. I spoke a lot to Pitygorsky about it, but it was too late. When we met each other, when we met with Alexander Moisevich, it was too early for me, but when we started talking, it was too late because there was not much time. And with the mention of Alexander Moisevich, it's, uh, it's uh, our time is up, and here the kind of political po po poems, long poems were and we are, uh, are, uh, are being written, and it's wonderful. Thank you, Gleb Olegovich. Thank you, Ivan. And I think we can finish with that. It was the discussion of the book uh, Ironical Empire, the, the shortlist of uh, Pesigorsky Prize. Thank you.